So without further ado from me, I will hand you over to Brandon to talk about all the applications for blockchain beyond cryptocurrency. Thanks. Thank you, Rob. Hi, guys. Thanks for coming. Um, before I start, just want to give a big thanks to all of our sponsors. Um, without them, this event couldn't be possible. And it's really awesome to see the sort of support that these corporations and these companies give to, um, to the developer community in WA. Um, so thank you very much. Um, a quick show of hands. Does anyone own any cryptocurrency, have, or, or in the past? Wow, OK, cool. Um, you know, brief, uh, small disclaimer, I don't own any. I never have. Um, but the technology that underpins it, that being blockchain, is something that really fascinates me. And I think there are some, some real useful applications outside of cryptocurrency, hence this, this chat. Um, so what you can expect from this session a better understanding of blockchain. Um, if if you, you've heard about it, but you don't really know what it is, I'm going to explain the key building blocks for it. Um, and then, of course, some real world applications outside of cryptocurrency. What not to expect? Um, we will not teach you how to get rich on Bitcoin. Um, that's another chat. Um, smart contracts, unfortunately, the length of the chat will prevent much depth um, of discussion within smart contracts, maybe next year. No, hands up. Um, and a live demo. I did intend to do a live demo. Um, I've written a, a small blockchain app myself. But again, session lim time limit constraints can't prevent that. Um, I will make the code available publicly, um, and I'll share that. So grab me on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever and, and let me know. Uh, so a bit about me. Um, I'm a developer, first and foremost. Um, I've been programming since, well, I don't know about 20 odd years or so, a little over that. Uh, wrote my first program in QBasic, Joyce. Um, and more recently, I've been involved with integration. That's been a, um, a specialization I've done. Um, and um, I'm currently a team lead, like Rob mentioned, at RAC. Um, I lead a great team of, in, of developers and engineers and testers. Um, they're a fantastic bunch. I'm also a gamer, um, both playing and developing. Hashtag made with Unity. Um, and I'm a petrol head, so I love cars, especially fast ones. If you want to chat to me about any of those, please do. Um, so what is blockchain? Uh, blockchain, in its, in its simplest form, is uh, a collection of databases distributed across multiple nodes uh, or, or services across everywhere, um, which have data which are linked together um, through crypto or crypto cryptography. Um, that's it in its simplest form. Uh, it can be referred to as a distributed database or a distributed ledger. Um, it should, it's worth noting, and a small caveat, that it is possible to have um, a blockchain that isn't distributed. There isn't much value in doing so. Um, and I'll get to it later. There are some severe drawbacks, significant drawbacks to um, blockchain, which would rarely prevent doing that, making that much value. Um, but there are three key benefits or three key properties of blockchain which make it really, really cool. Um, first of all, it's immutable. So what do I mean by that? It means that stuff that's in there cannot be changed. It can never be updated. You can add more stuff to it. You can never change it. Um, it's also trustless. So you don't have to know um, all those nodes that are in the network. You, you don't have to trust them at all. Um, and that's, that's purely by the mechanisms that are in play when stuff is added to the blockchain. It, it's inherently trusted. Um, it's also highly resilient. Because it's distributed, um, you can have millions and you can have hundreds of thousands of them fail and it will still work. Um, it's possible to have public and private blockchains, uh, public blockchains like all the cryptocurrencies, bitcoins, ethereum, ripple, litecoin, the works. Um, you can also have private ones that, that fulfill a more specific purpose that might be in government or in an organization, maybe an ERP, something like that. Um, and of course, like I mentioned, they can serve smart contracts. Uh, smart contracts have huge benefits and huge uses, uh, use cases in things like insurance um, and financial industries. Um, why should you care? Well, uh, Crunchbase found 1.3 billion reasons why you should care. Um, and that's just what they know about, and that's just for the first half of this year. 
Um, and it's worth noting that's also just venture capital. That is not everything. Um, it certainly not, doesn't include what all these guys are doing. They're all doing something in blockchain. Um, some are in various stages, so some will be pilots, some will be actual production uses. Um, but it's clear that if they all care about it, it's clearly a thing. Um, so it's worth at least getting to know a bit better. Um, so you might be asking yourself, how does that work? Um, well, it, magic, really, uh, let, let's be honest. Um, okay, no, that's not really the truth. Crypto cryptography, peering, and consensus are what make it work. Um, they form sort of the ingredients that make up this blockchain pie. Cryptography is the first, and I suppose one of the key foundation, key building blocks of blockchain. Um, and it's essentially what holds blockchains together. Um, cryptography serves many different uses. Uh, when you browse a website, it's got TLS, it's cryptography. Um, there are, I suppose, essentially two types of cryptography, two groups of cryptography. Um, there's encryption, which is what you would do on your websites, and if you wanted to share information securely, you want to encrypt it in one place and decrypt it in another. Um, but then there's hashing, and hashing is really what, um, what makes blockchain work. Um, so hashing is a deterministic method of taking something and turning it into apparent garbage. Um, but it's useful as a verification mechanism. Uh, it's deterministic in that you feed something in, and if you feed the same thing in over and over, you will get the same result at the end every single time. Um, it is not reversible, though. So you cannot take a hash and then turn it back into its original state. That doesn't work. Um, but hashing is what makes it immutable. Um, all the blocks, as in the diagram here, you can see... Um, are linked together. Each hash um, for a block links to the previous block. So um, if a block has hash one, two, three, the next block will have a reference to the hash of one, two, three before it. Now, how does that actually make it immutable? Well, because the hash is generated on the data within the block, um, you cannot change that data without changing the hash. So now if you change the hash, it breaks the entire chain. Um, so you cannot realistically do that. Peering is what makes the distributed nature or provides a distribution um, for a blockchain across a whole lot of nodes. It also serves as a mechanism for, um, for just finding out new nodes and, and distributing a list of nodes to other peers. Um, and it's the reason for its resilience. Uh, it's, uh, if you use something like BitTorrent, for example, saying, um, you, can find, you can always find a node somewhere. Um, it'll pick it up, it'll, find, it'll discover a list of nodes, and you'll be able to get to those, um, regardless of how many go on and offline all the time. And it's peer-to-peer. -peer is essentially what it is. And it's similar to our good old friend Napster. Anyone remember Napster? Yeah? Yeah. Um, E-Donkey, the works. Um, and one of the key, one of the, the nice ways, of, or the, one of the method, methods of um, creating a PSP network is distributed hash tables. Um, distributed hash tables are a key value pair of all of your nodes in a block. Um, and they can all discover each other, and they can find out who, what other nodes exist in a network. And through this mechanism, you can ensure that even if your node goes on or offline, or this node goes on or offline, you can still find someone else. Um, there are me there different mechanisms as well. You could also build your own custom layer 6 or layer 7 protocol to discover nodes. Uh, if you wanted to do something like HTTP and, and find stuff like that, you could do so. There are implications to doing so, but you could do so. But this, this is the most interesting part for me, and that's consensus. So imagine you have a million nodes in your network, and they all have to try and figure out what does the blockchain currently look like? What is the state? How do you figure that out? How does, if half of them are all getting new information that they need to add to the blockchain, how do you figure out 
who actually gets to add the next block? You know, one will add it on maybe in, in Australia, another one in Europe will decide, oh no, I want that block instead. My block's better. So how do you do that? And that, that really is, is what's known as a, um, a Byzantine general's problem. And, and the Byzantine general's problem is a fascinating one, and it, it, it actually spans many different disciplines, very, many different domains. Um, things like uh, aviation systems, for example. They have to know which system is down or which system is not down at any point and who can reliably fly a plane, which system is, is responsible for doing that job at that time. And that's a problem um, that's solved with um, Byzantine fault tolerance. Um, now, the Byzantine general's problem comes from uh, the, the, theory st the theory says um, there are several generals, Byzantine generals, uh, or generals that control um, portions of the Byzantine army, and they all want to attack a city. So in order to, to figure out what they need to do, they have to agree on a plan. And any plan that doesn't, isn't concerted, so if half of them leave and half of them decide to fight, it's going to be failure. It's going to be um, a disaster. So they have to either agree to retreat or to fight. Um, this is further complicated by things like treacherous generals, um, you know, ones that will try to misinform, and they will get another general to send his army in, and they'll go and retreat. Um, or what about well, they're physically distributed, they're located um, in different locations, geographic locations. So they now have to send a messenger. What if the messenger gets lost? What if, um, what if that messenger is actually going and forging his own messages? Um, so you have to figure out a way to, to kind of come to a consensus. Um, and in a blockchain world, that's done through consensus algorithms. Um, this is a form of Byzantine fault tolerance. Uh, and effectively, there are, at the moment, there are two primary methods of doing so. There are others. Um, but these are probably the biggest, proof of work and proof of stake. Um, proof of work is, is fairly common, it's probably the most common one, and it <coughs> involves uh, computational difficulty. So compu computing um, or doing a computationally difficult or calculative, okay, something that takes a long time, <laughs> um, to effectively uh, work out, uh, to prove that you've done something and it's valid. What that does, that disincentivizes um, those nodes or those uh, treacherous generals um, that want to do something bad because they have to invest effort into doing so. Um, but the way it works is um, hashing. It comes back to our hashing. So every node will um, take its block of data and it will run a hash on it. Um, and the difficulty is applied by requiring that hash to meet certain criteria. And that could be something like having the first X number of zeros, or first X number of characters of the hash being zero. Now, I did a, I did a test, um, and I was able to get, started off with trying to get a single zero, completed instantly. Two zeros, a couple seconds. Three zeros, a few more seconds. Four zeros, it was up to like a minute. Five zeros, and it was taking multiple minutes. Six zeros, and so on. So. And the way that's done is that's done um, by taking the data, because, as I mentioned to you before, um, a hash will always, the data will always have um, a single hash. Oh, the data entered will always have a single value at the end. So the way you change that value is by adding additional data. So you'll add what's called a nonce, and a nonce to the end of it will then, you randomize it, and you try it again, and you try it again, and you try it again, and eventually you will come up with your value, and that gives you your proof of work. Um, proof of stake, though, is, is somewhat more interesting in some cases. There are different mechanism, mechanisms for using proof of stake. Um, one of the ones I quite like is, Ouroboros, is the Ouroboros algorithm. Um, that is effectively a form of voting. Um, a proof of stake's core principle is that you have to have an investment in it. You have to have something um, that's of value that you're going to invest. And if you are found to be illegitimate, you will then lose your stake uh, in some way. Um, this is actually used in Ethereum's Casper protocol, if anyone's interested, it's quite cool. Um, it's delegated proof of stake, which is a, an offshoot of proof of stake. Um, but putting all together, essentially you have uh, a group of nodes communicating over peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, each node compiles its block um, and hashes it using cryptography. 
Um, the nodes, uh, the complete nodes are then um, voted on or, or uh, there is consensus that is applied to, inter to identify which node should then be applied to the block. Once that agreement is reached, the block is then distributed or that result is distributed and the block is added to the chain. Um, so practical applications, and this is really one of the key port parts of this chat is I really wanted to highlight these. There are numerous. Um, supply chain is an obvious one. Um, you can track your, um, you can track the entire supply chain from end to end, where the materials come from, uh, the processing of them, the building of them, um, when they're shipped to a shop, when they are purchased, you can track that entire journey. Um, and this, is, this largely comes out of a requirement for, by consumers, for more social, social responsible um, organizations, for, for, for more socially responsible companies and production. Um, one example um, was the WWF, not the one with Hulk Hogan, the one with the nice soft panda. Um, they partnered with uh, Sequest Fiji um, to do a bait-to-plate transparency project um, for the tuna trade. And essentially what they did was they can track where the fish was caught, who caught it, when it was caught, um, where it was processed, um, and where it went to. So a consumer can go into a store, um, take a QR code, read a QR code off of the, the, the tuna tuna, and know exactly everything about it. And what that does is that stamps out slave trade, it stamps out um, unsustainable fishing, and um, it addresses unsafe work conditions. Um, they used a Vine platform for that, just by the way. Um, so Samantha Jones, not the one from Sex in the City, the other one. Um, she started Origins and raised $1.2 million um, in a partnership with an M. Uh, and that was for um, apparels, that was for clothing. So you can track where the cotton came from, uh, where it was processed. Uh, and that, of course, is quite, it's quite significant. Uh, and her goal is to end modern day slavery. Uh, democracy, we're lucky to have a fairly good democracy here. Much of the world isn't so lucky. So fledgling democracies in particular um, are having some trouble. This can potentially solve that. Horizon State has got a pilot going in Sumatra um, for communi a community pilot though. Um, but they are hoping to help with the um, general Indonesian elections next year. Uh, real estate. Anyone bought a house or, or rented? Anyone know the pain? Absolute pain? Well, um, this can help in that. Uh, the Cook, Cook County Deeds Office, um, they ran a pilot in 2016 uh, and 2017 um, on blockchain where they did all their, um, all their real estate, all their... their property selling and buying um, with blockchain. Super interesting. Hope you go read. My favorite though, Power Ledger. Power Ledger is Perth based. Um, it's an energy peer-to-peer uh, -peer company. So they have effectively used blockchain to do everything from carbon trading to um, selling your energy back to the grid. But that's not all. I mean, any, all of those, every single one of them has an application for blockchain, every single one. But it's not all, not all rainbows and unicorns. It's not perfect. Um, performance is an issue using proof of work. Um, it can be wasteful. Again, proof of work. Uh, network size. The database gets big. Ethereum's 200 gig. Block Bitcoin is 100 gig. And it's immutable. You cannot change it. So if you need to change your data, blockchain's not for you. GPU prices and availability. We all know about that. Sorry, I can't really recap. I am being called on time. Um, but the presentation will be available, some useful links for you if you really want it. Um, but thank you very much, um, and I hope you found this somewhat useful. If you'd like to have a chat, please do.